we've uh, talked to many, many people about this. I think the short answer is that uh, Falun Gong started out in, in China. It's a branch of the Buddhist school. It, it believes in trying to help uh, people's uh, character and, and, and physical condition with gentle exercises and meditation and that sort of thing. They, uh, they went from zero in 1992 to between 70 and 100 million practitioners in China by the party's own estimate. Uh, so uh, you can see these other things. They believe in truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. Can you imagine? That makes you an enemy of the party. Um, I should probably tell you that David Maitis is, is Jewish. I'm, I'm a Christian, and we neither one of us are practitioners. But I tell you, I have the utmost admiration for practitioners that I've met in, uh, in probably 50 countries now. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, I think the, the president at the time in 99, Jiang Zemin, uh, felt that uh, there was a danger that Falun Gong was going to become more. Everybody in China was going to join Falun Gong. And, uh, we argue in our book that the values of Falun Gong are a lot more consistent with the values of historical China than the values of the Communist Party. One uh, farmer in China put it better than anybody. He said, Karl Marx, that doesn't sound like a Chinese name to me. And of course, it's a completely imported philosophy that's been discredited, and I think in all but about five countries on the face of the earth. Um, uh, so. That's when, why war was declared and why the war has gone on in a, in a barbaric, inhuman fashion ever since, and it continues to go on to this day. Uh, now, it's true, I should say this too, that, that the, uh, <coughs> the, the Christian community has been persecuted, the Uyghur community has been persecuted uh, badly, uh, and so has, the, the, of course, the Tibetan Buddhists. I was uh, talking to a highly educated uh, person from China quite recently, and we were talking about, uh, about Tibet, and uh, she said uh, something to this effect. We need an authoritarian government in China because the Dalai Lama wants to take Tibet out of China by force. Well, I explained to her that the Dalai Lama has never advocated force about anything at any time, and he does not want to take Tibet out of China. He wants to have some autonomy for Tibet. And as you probably also know, he's said, he said in Ottawa about a year ago that uh, in fact, the Tibetans and the Chinese people are friends, but the party chooses to stir up, uh, stir up uh, bad feelings between the two groups. And as you probably know, they do. She was astounded to hear that uh, the Dalai Lama doesn't want to take Tibet out of China by force. But that's the, that's what a what a party press and a a press that stirs up. 24-7 demonizes the Falun Gong community or the, or the Dalai Lama and does this year after year after year. I have a friend who uh, went to Beijing a couple of years ago and uh, she and her mother were making a tour of Tiananmen Square and a, uh, the guide they were had with him, somehow Falun Gong came up and the guide said, oh yes, they eat their young, they eat their children. I mean, this is the measure of demonization that, that goes on. David Maitis is a, is a scholar of the Holocaust, and as he's said many times, that's how, that's how Hitler started dealing with the Jewish community. He just say one lie after another, and sooner or later, enough people will, will believe it. And it also, by the way, is how the Rwandan genocide got going, too. The, it started with, uh, with radio broadcasts, Radio de Mille Colin, that, uh, that called the Tutsi community uh, all kinds of names. Well, I guess I'm... Uh, running fast out of time. I, if you look at the, uh, I've outlined what a number of countries have done. The UN, can you go to the UN's stuff, uh, Dan? The, the UN has actually been, uh, sorry, UN has been very helpful. Two, two rapporteurs, one on torture, has been, uh, have been very good about asking the government of China why they're doing this, and they've given them no substantive answer. Uh, the World Medical Association has demanded China stop using prisoners as organ donors. The best organization, uh, DAFO, Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, they've been extremely helpful on this issue. They're the ones who perhaps should get the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in another year. Uh, okay, I, as Spain, actually Spain has been good. They've, uh, I think we have Spain up on that somewhere. The Spanish National Transplant Association has launched a lawsuit against a Spanish patient who went to China for organ transplant and pr promoted this behavior. What, um, of course, I wish you'd, if you agree, I wish you'd help us do is get the government of, of uh, Sweden to pass a law saying that nobody can 
can uh, buy a trafficked organ. They don't have to even mention China. The fact that it's the only country in the world where you can buy a trafficked organ uh, through quasi-official sources is, you don't have to say that. Uh, just say that nobody can, in Sweden can buy a trafficked organ and uh, it would stop immediately. Because what Israel discovered is that their health insurance was paying for Israeli citizens to fly to China to get organs, playing, paying the plane fare and the huge cost of the organs. Then people were coming back and their bills were being paid by the insurance companies. Until Dr. Jay Lavi uh, one day was told by one of his patients that uh, he was going in two weeks for a heart transplant in, uh, in China. And Dr. Lavi said, two weeks you're going to have a heart transplant at a certain time and place? So he figured the penny dropped for him, and he uh, managed to get the Knesset to pass a law that bars Israelis from buying trafficked organs. It also helps people to get more volunteer donors in Israel by saying that if you sign a donor card, you get priority on, do on, do on organs when they become up voluntarily. I guess that's probably a very good, good place to stop. So what can Sweden do? Uh, we would, as I said, would very much like it if you'd talk to your MPs or your, uh, uh, and get them to consider passing a law such as the one that in, they're considering in, in uh, I think they're considering it in Scotland. We were in the British Parliament last week. Hope, hopefully they're going to do something, even in Wales, <coughs> because they, they have control over health as a health matter. Hopefully you could pass a law that, as I said earlier, bars people from getting uh, getting uh, trafficked organs. Let me just end by saying that many of us inside and out China, inside of China, uh, we can have, now's the time to have an influence on the new government in China, I think, uh, because it's necessary for tens of millions of Falun Gong practitioners and their families. It's also because it's good for China and the international community as a whole. We all, all of us want a China that enjoys the rule of law, dignity for all, and uh, democratic uh, governance. Thank you very much.